Well, welcome once again. This is the third podcast in our four-part series on the spirit and the power of Elijah. Uh, just to uh, remind everyone, we're basically drawing from Luke chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Speaking of John the Baptist, where it says he will go as a forerunner in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn people back to Christ and turn to, to make them ready for the second coming uh, of the Lord. So we're talking about end-time messengers, end-time master builders, and end-time forerunners. Uh, in the last session, we talked about the spirit of Elijah, and the spirit of Elijah being that un- part of the anointing of the spirit and power of Elijah, which changes your desires. It gives you a desire, an inward desire, and a burden to see people come back to the truth and come back to the th- to the things of God in wholeheartedness, and not to focus on so many of the externals like healing and prosperity and all that, but to come back to this man, Christ Jesus, the eternal man. So in this session, though, we want to uh, switch from the spirit of Elijah to talk about what is the power uh, of Elijah. Uh, Let me start out by just talking about what is uh, God's definition of power. You know, we often we think about it as signs and wonders and mighty deeds, and that's certainly a part of it. But if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I think it starts with verse 9. You know, Paul was, was praying and talking about how he had prayed with a, uh, a thorn in his flesh. He had prayed for it to be removed. And the Lord spoke to him and said, uh, you know, well, he wasn't going to remove it. He said that my grace is sufficient for you. And he says, my power is perfected in your weakness. My power, Jesus' power, is perfected, is made real, made full, in, in our weakness. Uh, in the same book, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, Paul talks about being a, a, uh, having a treasure in an earthen vessel. And so what he's saying is that we are an earthen vessel. Uh, you know, you and I and whoever will listen to this, we have no power in and of ourselves. We're, we're, we're weak. We have no power in and of ourselves. Uh, but Christ in us is all powerful. Uh, and so this is the kind of the definition of, of power. It is the, the grace or the empowerment for us to accomplish uh, what God wants us to accomplish. Uh, if the need is healing, it's the power of Christ in us to heal somebody. If the need is deliverance, it's the power of Christ within us to set them free, deliver them. If, the, if, it's a, if there's a need for a prophetic word or prophetic encounter, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that speaks the word uh, of encouragement, exhortation, or comfort, or whatever the particular meaning, need for that word is. So <clears throat> power uh, is the empowerment within us that uh, helps us to accomplish the function. Uh, so let's t- take that to the spirit and the power of Elijah. Remember, the, the function is being a messenger. The, uh, the function is being a master builder. The function is being a forerunner. Uh, whereas the spirit of Elijah gives you the, the desire to do those things and the burden for the state of the church in context of these end time things, the power of Elijah is the empowerment within us that causes results. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. Now that may, we'll talk about that more in, here in just a minute, but that's not the, the primary function of the power of Elijah. The power of Elijah, whereas the spirit of Elijah, it gives you the desire to make a people ready and a, and a burden for that. The power of Elijah is the empowerment within us to bring results. Um, Let's just look at John the Baptist. Think about John the Baptist for a minute. He went into the wilderness and he preached wearing uh, uh, camel skin, eating locust and honey. Uh, There was nothing in him that was appealing. He did not have on a three-piece suit with a little handkerchief coming out the collar and a big tie and gold cuff links or a gold watch on. He didn't have any of those things. He was, there was nothing in him that was appealing. Yet, 
hundreds, thousands of people flocked to the wilderness to get, to repent. Uh, now, you can imagine how that would work in today's church. Uh, not very well. Why did it work? Not because of his fancy words. It was because of the power of Elijah that was on his life. It was the power of Elijah that drew the people to him so that he could pre prepare them for the coming of the Messiah. You know, the same, you can take the same with Elijah's life. It was the power was that that anointing, that empowerment within him or upon him in Elijah's case and both their cases of the power upon them that drew people to hear their message for their their voice to make impact. So that's the power of Elijah. Now, I do want to talk about uh, signs and wonders because I don't want anybody to go into this call thinking that if I receive the anointing of the Spirit and the power of Elijah, it's going to increase my ability to do signs, wonders, miracles, and mighty deeds. It might, but it might not. Uh, if you think about Elijah, I mean, he did operate in, in, you know, in some signs and wonders, and Elisha even more so. There, there were miracles that were a part of their life. But when you think about John the Baptist, it, it is said of him that he did not perform any miracle or any sign. Let me read that scripture verse. Uh, it's from John 10, uh, chap chapter 10, verse 40 through 42. And he went away, uh, uh, he, went, uh, he, w he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was first baptizing. This is Jesus. And he was staying there. And many came to him, came to Jesus, and were saying, while, while John performed no sign, this is what Jesus said, uh, while John performed no sign, yet everything John said about this man was true. Many, and because of that, they were saying that, many believed in, in Christ there. Uh, but the point for this uh, right here is it says that John did not perform any sign. He performed no signs or wonders or miracles. So if you go in, as you go into this calling, don't think if I go into this calling, I'm gonna, it's going to enhance my ability to pray for the sick and then to be healed or whatever. It may, uh, it may or, but it may not. Most likely it will not. I know in just in, I'll close with this testimony. Just in my own life, my own ministry, um, I went into the ministry uh, in the beginning of 1984. That's just been a while. And we didn't start the forerunner call until 96. But uh, about in that period in the 80s, uh, the Lord used my wife and I a lot in healing and uh, different kinds of, of ministry. Um, you know, when you've, you've all studied the Hearing God's Voice class, and a lot of the stories about are about power ministry coming through uh, our ministry, hearing God and then ministering uh, in power. Uh, and they, those were all true stories. Uh, but it was interesting as when I received this impartation of the Spirit and the power of Elijah, the, the miracle ministry really dried up. Uh, and, you know, I've said this, I probably was used in more miraculous, what would be called signs and wonders, uh, in the first 10 years of my ministry than since that point in time. Uh, but I don't, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I'd much rather be a voice into the church to turn them back to the, uh, to the purpose of God and, and let others move in the signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. Uh, and, you know, if they happen, I, I'd I love that, and from time to time that does happen, but for the most part, uh, not nearly as much as it did uh, in the past. So the power of Elijah, here just to close with this, the power of Elijah is the empowerment within us to bring results, to bring transformation, to bring change. It may be accompanied with signs and wonders, what we normally call the power ministry, but it may not. Uh, but it will produce results to turn people back to God to make them ready for, for the end times and for the second coming of Christ. Uh, so that's the power of Elijah. We'll talk more 
in this final podcast that will be coming up uh, after this one. God bless you.